Again, your comb is in line with the parting, all the way down, scissors, parting, comb, all parallel to, to each other, and cut. Notice I'm not pulling anything, and I'm not doing this. I'm not adding angles. I want a natural flow the way the hair naturally comes out of the head within the parting that I'm putting into the design. We're getting right up into our previously cut section now. Our section line. Going all the way up to the parting again, cutting the hair. You'll see now that you have some side pieces in there. Also go all the way up to the parting and join them together with the back. And there'll be no problem with behind the ear where you don't have as much hair as you have in the back section. Okay, we're right to our section piece here, where we're joining now the side, again on this side, to the back, and we're not pulling anything. Our comb goes right to the parting, that way we don't make a mistake. Comb, scissors, parting. Very good, very good. And that's our first section of this haircut completed. We've now joined the back and the front, front sections of the perimeter of this design. As you've noticed, we're cutting with absolutely no tension in this design. This will also ensure that the cut will be straight. You've also seen that we've been following our parting all the way along, and the perimeter matches the parting line that we have previously put in the section cut. We're, we can now start working all the way from the center back to the front, following that same line. So just take your comb and start carving out your sections. You can take as large a section as you want as long as you can see your guide. In this cut, the larger the section you take, the better it is. As long as you can see your guide through the section piece, you're fine. Make sure we're combing, combing, combing as we're going along. And we're getting closer to the center part of the top of the head. Move that out of your way. You see our parting is the same curvature. Make sure that the section is really wet. Take your comb to the parting. Scissor comb in line. Right up to the top again. A lot of people start just combing the hair from the midsection. If you, do, if you do that, you're going to lose your line. Always back up to the parting, down, following with your comb and your scissors. This system was designed for ease. And down. Now we're going to take our whole top section back down before we go to the other side because there shouldn't really be much hair left to cut here. You notice we're right at our part line. It's going to feel like you're pulling back a little bit, but it's actually going to ensure that the haircut comes out straight. So you're going now right with your parting from the top. Make sure you comb everything out really nice so you can see. And as I said, there's not really that much hair left to cut here. Right to the top parting down. 
right to the top parting and you see this is where you feel like you're going slightly back but you're actually just going in line with the rest of the cut and when you let go you'll have a nice straight line from the back to the front We'll be finishing up the other side the same way. Making sure we're in line with the parting. Taking our section. We're now joining the front to the back. Making sure we can see our guide. Taking the teeth of the comb all the way up to the parting. And cut. And there shouldn't be much more hair here for us to cut. We're going to go right up to the part line, and this is why everything matches. Comb, comb, comb. All the way down. Find your guide, comb, scissors in line with parting, follow all the way down, same thing. And your bob is cut. Now all we have to do is finish her. Now, as you can see in our finished design, the hair naturally falls in its natural fall line. It's even all the way around. There's no place where there's any gaps or holes. And no matter how she combs her hair or how she moves it around, it's going to fall in the bob at zero elevation. That's what we want from our designs when we cut them. We don't want any mistakes and we don't want any surprises. The bone structure of the head is extremely important in hair design. Where the different bones meet in the skull are actually transition points on the, in the way that the hair flows out of the head and affects your design. The four bones that we want to concern ourselves with the most are the frontal, which actually incorporates the brow bones and part of the cranium in the top of the head. The parietal bone, which is the largest bone, which goes from the top of the head all the way to the center back of the head. The temporal bones, which form the lateral walls of the cranium, they're on the sides of the head and they're where, where the ears are actually involved and are held up by these bones. And the occipital bone, which is very often co confused with the parietal bone, but actually sits underneath it in the nape area of the head in the back of the skull. Where these bones join are transition areas in our design and very often must be treated very differently. This is why they are so important. Many times we section a head of hair for a design, not taking the bone structure in consideration, and we'll find later that there are flat parts in the design or the hair is hanging in places like in front of the face where it does not belong. This is why we must use our comb as often as we can and our hands to actually feel the person's head shape, be familiar with where the bones join together, and make our partings accordingly.